the derivative of a function where we have basically an exponential, so b to some x, where b is just the base that we have. So our function, you can imagine, is this. Now, what do we want to show? We want to be able to show that if we take the derivative of this particular function, that it will equal to ln of b multiplied by the function back. So b to the x, that's the idea, that's the goal that we want. Now, I'm going to say a little bit more than just show you the proof. If you want, you can of course kind of fast forward and go to the proof directly. But I wanted to point out several things which I as a student um, got caught up with. Um, when I was doing math and especially as I kept going on, you know, there's kind of this assumption that this b is always positive, you know, takes on certain values. So I want to talk about that first, right? So if you're going to take this as a function and you're going to define this b, so we can't say that b is an element of all real numbers. So basically any number that we like. So that's not necessarily true. So first, I'm going to divide this into you know several categories. Number one, um, we can't really have b is equal to zero, right? So that should make sense to you because then, well, zero raised to anything, really, we're gonna run into the problem that it's just zero. So we exclude, okay, this basic case. We also exclude the basic case when b is equal to one because again, one raised to anything is going to be equal to one this time around and it's just really a flat line. So that's not what we're interested in either. So what does that leave us with? Well, it leaves us kind of several things. Number one, it leaves us the case when b is greater than one. Now, this is of course exponential growth. That's what this function represents. And when we have our b, so is between zero and one, this is exponential decay. So it's a function that is basically decaying to zero. So these two cases, exponential growth and exponential decay, are certainly the ones that we make the assumption that our base is equal to. So it's either between zero and one or it's greater than one. That's what we assume and then we can take the derivative of that. Now, if you want you know, a lot more on term, in terms of exponential growth, exponential decay, I'll put up a link up above there when I talked about functions just in general. Now, there's one more case which always kind of tripped me up as, as I was going to, uh, through this, and that is the case, well, okay, so what about the case when b is actually less than zero? So you know, what happens in this particular case? So what if it's negative? And that would mean that we would be trying to have a function which is, so within here, okay, so this particular b and my b, okay, is going to be a negative number in here and it's going to be raised to some exponent x. Well, if nobody ever really tells you, you always kind of start thinking about, okay, why, why isn't the case, why aren't we using that? You know, we can certainly have a negative base and then raise it to an exponent but why can't we have it as a function? Well, we cannot, I will simplify this a little bit. So as you know, so if you take any negative number, it doesn't really matter which negative number you take, so your favorite negative number, I don't know, minus 13, you know that this is just equal to negative one multiplied by 13, right? And you can do that with anything. So if you take, for instance, negative two, it's going to be negative one you know, times two. Now, if you wanted to take the actual um, exponent of this, if it's an individual, right? So if you have something like this, let's say if it was negative two, as you can see there up above, so what we would run into is we would run into this item, and then we would try to raise it to x and then make it a function. But this is, you know, you can bring in the actual exponent in, so you're gonna have negative one, raised to the x, and then you're gonna have two raised to the x right there. This two to the x doesn't 
cause us any issues because that is just exponential growth. But what about this? You know, does this cause us any issues? Yes, it does. And this should not surprise you, even if you're thinking about X just being integers. So if X was just integers, meaning negative and positive and, and zero in terms of whole numbers, we're gonna run into a problem here, right? And the problem would be that if it is positive, so you know, if you have positive integers right here, then you know you can certainly find out what the answer is, and it's gonna be flip-flopping kind of back and forth, right? Between a positive one, okay, and negative one, just depending on what it is. Um, if x is zero, then it's just equal to one. If it becomes, you know, negative, so if it's negative integers, again, you're gonna run into kind of the flip-flopping between zero and one. And you can see that, you know, if you try to plot that out, you know, you would just get this flip-flop back and forth, back and forth, which, which is completely a discontinuous function for us. So taking a derivative of this discontinuous function um, would have been a problem. Now, now that is just for integers. Now what happens because if it's all real numbers, well, it doesn't even exist for most real numbers. Even if you take a rational number, you're gonna run into a problem. So the problem will be, for instance, if you had negative one, and let's say, you know, it was, I don't know, maybe 2.3, right? Now, this negative 2.3, which you're going to run into, you're not always guaranteed that this actually gives you an answer back. You know, so negative 2.3, you can certainly change this back into um, just, it's a rational number, so you can change it back to a, a fraction. For instance, negative 1, 23 over 10, for instance. You know, you can do something like this. And what this would be is, this is really just, you know, the 10th root, of negative one, as you would have in here, and this whole thing would have been raised to 23. Now, can I calculate this? Yeah, I mean, sometimes you might be able to calculate it, but sometimes you may not be able to calculate it. So for instance, you know, let's make it much simpler. What if it was negative one raised to one over two? So this is just really the square root of negative one. This doesn't exist because under the square root, we can't have a negative, and this would just not be in the domain. So you're going to have a lot of kind of items which are not in the domain, okay, for x. So not only is it going to be flip-flopping between negative one and one, okay, and for a lot of them, it just won't exist at all. And that's why we never really take our base to be less than zero. Now, I, I, I hope that makes sense in some way, and you can put a comment if you're watching. Um, you know, this is the reason why we never consider it. And what I find is, you know, teachers never really talk about this at all. Maybe, not sure, maybe they forget, maybe they don't even understand why we don't do it. But we can't have, you know, our base to be less than zero if we want it to be as a function, like so. So, I hope that explanation makes sense and you can, you know, kind of go through it. Now, there is absolutely no problem if we have our base and it's positive, right? Aside from being one, because that's kind of irrelevant because it would be just a constant. But for all the rest, if it's positive, then it's just a fair game. We can always take to the exponent of a positive and it doesn't matter if it's rational, irrational, or whatever it might be. So that actually exists and we can certainly plot them out and we saw that in exponential growth and exponential decay. So this is a long introduction, right? Because you came in here and you were kind of thinking about, all right, I'm gonna be watching the derivative of this. That is true, I'm gonna just show you in a moment. That part is actually gonna be relatively short. But I wanted to remind you of what this is and then what the base can be, all right? So now coming back to the actual derivative and trying to show that it is equal to this, you know, how would we do that? There are numerous ways and you can certainly find it on the web, you know, depending on which teachers you have. I love to write this and use the exponent and log properties to be able to prove this result in terms of its derivative. So for example, you know, if I go back to the original, so this is b to the x. 
Now, the way that I'm going to be proving this is I'm going to make an assumption that you know that the derivative of the exponential function right here, so d dx is equal to e to dx, which is exactly the same. Now, if you don't know that, I actually did the proof of that, and that's kind of, if I was teaching, that would be the first thing that I would show students. I'm gonna put up a link up above to that right there. So if you wanna watch it, you can go through it so that you understand it, because I'm gonna be using that. And now, why am I using that is because I'm gonna take this, and I'm going to use my log properties, and my log properties, what I'm going to do here is, this, okay, so if I rewrite this, this is just b to the x, of course, this is an overkill to put it in brackets, but I just wanna show you what I'm gonna do inside of the brackets. Inside of the brackets, I'm going to take this, and this, by log properties, is the same thing as e to the log of e of b. That's exactly what it is, right? So that property is just a log property. And again, I can put up a link up above there to the log properties if you don't remember. And when you're doing proofs, you do have to use some tools from the past. And this is a tool. And logs typically would be introduced grade 11, maybe kind of grade 12, depending on your teachers. But that's what I'm using. Now you might say, why do you need this? Well, I need it because now what I can do is I can say that this is just E. Now notice log of log e is just ln that's how we write it so this is b and then multiplied by x and now if i want to take the derivative of this that's the same thing so meaning the derivative of the left hand side it's going to be equal to the derivative of the right hand side and that's where i'm going to be using that so i'm going to be using that the derivative of an exponential is just the exponential so if i take this and try to take its derivative so now the derivative of e, well, it is e. So this is going to be e ln b times x. So it gives me that back multiplied because by the chain rule, now I need to the chain rule of the argument, which is that. So now it's going to be multiplied by the derivative of ln b, which is a constant, times your x, which is just simply ln b. And there is your full derivative. So this is nothing else but simply, so I can put the ln b in front, and it's multiplied by this right here, but what is that? Well, that's just b, right? That's how I have rewritten b. So this is just simply equal to b. So this, you know, from right here, this is just simply b to the x, right? So that x is right there that you have because it is um, multiplying that. And that is actually the proof of your derivative, okay? So this would be the derivative of our exponential. So you're just multiplying it by ln b. And this is for any b. So now this is going to be for b, which is either greater than zero, or b, which is going to be between these values. It cannot be b which is negative, which is the explanation that I showed you. So, you know, don't get caught with that, you know, so this is really all together. Whenever we are taking, you know, some b, so b just means base, to the x, and it doesn't matter what it is, um, we're always making this assumption. All right? Okay, so I hope that this video is helpful. Now you know the derivatives of basically exponentials. You can put them now in your tool bag, okay, with all your other derivatives, um, and that's going to help you, you know, to find slopes at basically any point you like, okay, of a exponential function. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in a future video, okay? Happy studying, everyone. Bye.